Hey, so today we're breaking the sound barrier with an angle grinder, or it's just a regular Tuesday with Tech Iman. We're sonic booming, guys. We're sonic booming. It's, it's extraordinary. It really is. That's sonic booming. So I really wanted to break the sound barrier in a simple sort of a way. And believe it or not, it is harder than you might think. But in the end, it actually turned out to be a little bit easier. So first, I was jotting down in my notebook some formulas because I had a fairly good idea. An angle grinder spins at around 10,000 RPM. If I could figure out a way to speed that rotation up, then I would be able to get a rim of, say, a wheel to be spinning at the speed of sound. So a lot of people try it with gears. The problem with gears is there's a lot of force that needs to be applied if you're gonna do a gear reduction to get that fast and things get, well, things break. And I wanted to go super basic. So what I came up with is, well, what if I use the angle grinder but without a cutting disc? What if I used a rubber disc and I was able to press it on a bigger disc and if I start moving it further in towards the center of the disc what I'm effectively doing is creating a gear ratio. So it's the same reason that if I try and do a screw up with a screwdriver I will only be able to do it so fast from the top from this big section but if I start spinning it like this it'll go a lot faster because this is actually like a bigger gear, this is a smaller gear. So likewise, if I have a wheel and I'm rotating it from this side, so I put the angle grinder here, I'll only be able to go so fast, I'll actually be only be able to go the same speed as the angle grinder. But if I touch the angle grinder here, well then I'll be able to get it spinning faster. I've created a gear ratio of the disc and this, so this will start spinning faster. So, that was the idea. So off I went to get some parts to actually get this happening. So I made my way to the hardware store and we can see now we're looking for a head for the grinder that's gonna be able to make contact. So I found one online and I'm just searching for it now and here it is down here so it's not rubber but it's a hard material next we're gonna get some wheels so see some wheels here listen to this absolutely garbage how's that gonna withstand any rpm this one's a little bit better so i'm just gonna get that since when was it so difficult to just walk into a hardware store and get some equipment that can withstand supersonic speeds? So, first I need to get this off. Alright, so I've put this new head on and let's start spinning up. So before I carry on, I just want to say that I ditched the cheap plastic wheel and I found this wheel here, which is a scooter wheel that I had off one of my old e-scooters. It's a solid aluminium hub and it has a solid rubber tire. Now you can see here that I'm just trying it with this foam wheel that I also got from the hardware store and I can attach it to the outside and get speed and then I can try and attach it to the inside to really boost that speed. But these are growing pains, it wasn't working very well and the next error I make is trying to attach this drill head that it's only rated at 3000 RPM to an angle grinder that goes at 9500 RPM and we'll see what happens. Yep, you guessed it, she blew up. Alright, so now I go back to running with the plastic disc and you can see it's starting to accelerate here and it's gonna catch and it's going to build up speed and then when I let it go the bearings are doing their job it's just spinning around nicely okay and then watch this so this is important speed it up speed it up I can hear it you really can't but the RPM is increasing and now see it's gone blurry that yeah. tire 
has expanded and it's wanting to expand off the rim. So this is not going to be able to withstand, withstand the speeds that we want to give it. It was insane. You could see that the rubber was about to blow off the wheel. So I had to ditch the rubber. working before and I wasn't able to get up to speed while touching the center but I found out that I've just got to get that really maximum speed first right up here before I go in. I don't know what speed I was getting it sounded fast. I needed a digital tachometer, so I went and got one. Okay, so just bought a digital tachometer, so let's get some readings. So this tachometer just measures the RPM, which it's reading now, and it's slowly increasing its value. You put a little reflective sticker on the shaft, point that laser at it. Now I've had to mount it in this enclosure, but you can now hear it really ramp up. And when I get on the center, I can really boost. So if you could read it, it was just below 12,000 RPM, and now it's spooling down. The bearings are holding up okay. So I had to put the meter in this position, otherwise you'd have to hold the button to get the reading. So I've just strapped it up here so I can point it on. So I did get an increase in speed and you could hear the frequency going up as I moved the grinder closer in. You could definitely hear the frequency going up. But it seemed to stall always at that RPM, at around 12,000 RPM. I couldn't really get higher than that. And I suspect that there was just too much friction in the system, even in the bearings. There was so much friction and it was actually taking effect. Probably the grinder started to slip as well. It just was not able to reach that speed. Even with a bigger diameter in that middle wheel, I should still have been able to achieve the desired RPM to get that outside rim traveling at or above the speed of sound, but it just did not happen. There was a lot of vibration, and I suspect that that vibration as well, that slight imbalance, as well balanced as the wheel was, I think that was creating more friction and it just would not go higher than that speed. So I needed to pivot. Started thinking, what are the ways I can break that barrier? At this stage, it became clear that I needed to increase the diameter of the disc to get that edge, the linear velocity, closer to the speed of sound. I just needed to increase the diameter. After all, the velocity of that outer rim is equal to pi times the diameter times the RPM divided by 60. So as long as I could increase the diameter, I could increase the speed. It's not so easy though, because a bigger disc means it's heavier, more inertia, and it's harder to spin. But then I thought, well, what if we just extend something outside that rim to speed up, something light? So I started experimenting. So in this case, I just uh, attached some cable ties to it. So there's one cable tie sticking up on the end. And I'm speeding it up. And you can see instantly there's huge amounts of drag. It's not able to get above 2,000 RPM. No matter what I do, there's just so much drag. And look, the minute I stop, it just slows down, almost to a stop. Usually it goes on for over a minute or two minutes, but there's a lot of drag and not enough power to just cut through the air. 
Now, it is really hard to hear in the video, but the air resistance that that little cable tie created was insane. It slowed the RPM down tremendously, which I found fascinating. Such a thin little piece of plastic could actually create so much resistance through the air that it really robs all the energy. So you can really understand that when going fast, and of course drag increases with the square of velocity, I was having no success. I was nowhere close to the required RPM and I was getting close to giving up. Then, right at the end, I thought, I'll try one more thing. I found some fishing line and I attached that to the rim. And then I started getting phenomenal RPM, 7,000 and above. And there was so little drag, which means that I was getting speeds of 153 meters per second. That's 550 kilometers an hour, or 340 miles an hour. The fishing line worked great and it was the ticket to getting into the supersonic league. So at this stage, it was like eight, getting close to 9 p.m. My girlfriend was telling me to shut up. Neighbors have babies and things. So I reluctantly finished up. When I came inside and I was discussing with my girlfriend the processes that I went through and I was explaining all the numbers that I had and I was like, all right, I need 7,000 RPM with this much fishing line. I should be able to break the sound barrier. And she was like, so how fast does the angle grinder go? And I was like, Ni around 9,000 RPM. And she's like, well, isn't that what you need? And although I did think about using the angle grinder directly, I was kind of lost in this process of getting closer and closer and seeing results. So I went, yeah. <laughs> and then I started formulating what I was going to do the next day, which is go directly off the angle grinder, minimize all the variables and the slipping and everything, and just start trying to get that speed up with longer and longer fishing wire. So I started off slow, measured out a bit of wire. This is my little measuring rig, which you'll see it will evolve in time, and tied it on and then fired it up. And you can see I'm just looking for a mark on the table so I know the distance that I'm actually getting, so I can calculate. Like so, you can really hear how different it sounds now, coming through the air. So, I measure this up and we can see that that is about 27 centimeters 2 .6, 2 .6. or about 10.6 inches so now an rpm reading and our max rpm here on memory is 8600 okay so we plug that into the calculator we remember we have to double the length that we have because that was the radius we need the diameter so it's going to be 540 millimeters and I've put the RPM in there, and that gives us 244 meters per second. We are getting close to the speed of sound, guys. That's 880 kilometers an hour, or nearly 550 miles per hour. Remember, the speed of sound is 343 meters per second. We are close. But then we hit an issue. As I increased the length of the fishing wire, the angle grinder would actually speed up and the length I measured would become shorter. And when we slow down the footage, we can see why. The fishing wire tangles itself around the head of the angle grinder and it shortens the length. So the fishing wire had issues. It was always wrapping around and it was very, very difficult to keep it straight. And that was becoming a problem because I was getting high speed, but I wasn't getting that required length to actually get to the sound barrier. It needed some more workshopping. So I ditched the fishing line as it was just tangling so easily. It just kept spooling onto the front of the grinder. So I found the packaging for the 
grinder head and at this stage I bought like five of these things and they were pretty expensive so that was annoying. With the packaging of it it had a cone shape so I attached that to the front taped it up surprisingly the tape held well sometimes it didn't but most of the time it did and then have a look at this I don't know about you, but that was Sonic Boom. That was just boom, 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 boom. Yes! Finally, the breakthrough we were all waiting for. That crack. We had done it. It was finicky, but we had finally got there. It was time for some measurements. The cracks you're hearing are exactly the same as the cracks that a whip makes when you flick it. The end of that whip is going so fast it's breaking the sound barrier, but this is happening many, many times. The string was 50 mil long and it's very hard to get accurate me measurements, but it was about 45 or 46. Let's call it 44, which is 880 millimeters in diameter, and the RPM was 7,523. Plug that into the calculator, and bam, we have exceeded the speed of sound. I think that was hitting it around there. Um, that was 50. We're sonic booming, guys. We're sonic booming. It's, it's extraordinary. It really is. It's extraordinary. After, you know, two days of failing. <laughs> That's Sonic Boom. Lo and behold, we were breaking the sound barrier. We had it in numbers and we had it in sound. It was a bloody good day. So it was annoying that the wire was getting caught on the back of the grinder, which I couldn't really do much about. I've, I fixed the front spooling issue, but the back, well, you have a shaft going through it. I tried many things to touch the grinder head with with some cardboard or with some material to try and push the string around. Nothing really worked. Then I got another breakthrough, air. By using this industrial blower behind me, I could force the string forward. And as it was rotating, it would be pushed forward. And of course, it won't be able to wind up on the front of it because of my contraption. So it was all good. But yes, it was a very, very draining couple of days and I got very, very close to giving up a lot of times, but eventually we did get there. It was very rewarding. So yeah, there you have it. Breaking the sound barrier with nothing but an angle grinder and some string. It's, it's phenomenal, but it's doable. So if you like that video, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you would have changed. Let me know some ideas for the future. Uh, please like and subscribe. That really helps. I've only just got a bit more than a thousand subscribers, so let's um, really push those rookie numbers up. So if you can take anything from this video, it's if you're trying and not succeeding, just, just keep at it for a little bit and think a little bit, take a little bit of a break, get some ideas from other people and um, just keep going. So remember, dream big and make it happen.